it is time for another mailbag. Which is a happy coincidence, because I got stuff to open. Uh, where should I start? Well, let's start with that one. I'd like to introduce the beer of the day, but I quite honestly can't remember what I got in that growler. I just went to the place and tasted some samples and picked this one. I wish they'd written the name on the tag. Yeah, whatever. I have... A th that's not the right blade, that's a little saw blade. There's my actual blade. There we go. Okay, I have Repair Tool at a value of 13 American pennies, it says. I don't know what kind of a tool, if that's really what it is. Hmm. Ah. Come on, get out. Oh, I hope it's supposed to fold. Oh! I remember this. Wow, how long ago there is This is a credit card knife. It's designed to you know, fit in your wallet. And then you fold the blade out. And what happens? And oh, these pieces ah, fold over. And little spots that click it together. And it's a knife actually relatively sharp for a factory grind. Let's try it on. Whoa! Zoom back out again. That actually worked pretty well against that stuff compared to... Yeah! It's all right. What else can I cut? <laughs> How about this shtick? Can I... Hmm. Okay, I mean, that's just a tongue depressor, but it cuts into it very well. Obviously, this isn't going to be your daily knife, but that's probably just cheap carbon steel. Nothing fancy. That's not bad. It's got a bit of an edge on it. Cool. I wonder how much I paid for that. Man, and when? This was a long time ago, actually. This was three and a half months it took to get here. And I did buy it at auction, and I bought it at auction for 65 cents, and I found another one that's currently on auction and currently selling for 65 cents as well. Um, they typically go anywhere in the buck range. You can find them more expensive. But they're they're fairly cheap, and they're fairly good. I mean, for what it is, right? It's not... It's not going to uh, be your your main outdoors survival, camping, sailing, diving, fishing, and hunting knife, or kitchen knife, or whatever. But as, um, I guess, just an emergency knife to carry in your wallet or something like that, or throw in the glove box of your car or something like that, throw in your, in your hiking backpack, just, uh, it's probably fine for that. This one says it's stainless steel, which I'm fairly confident is bullshit. Um... Now that I've got that, I think I'll just keep using it for the rest of the day. Next thing, enclosure box times two. Eh, it's all right. I might want to put a bit more point on it. It's a little bit blunt. So, what do we have here? Two project boxes. They look like they... Okay, they do screw together. That's good. They are in American. They are three inches by five inches. In the rest of the world's units. They are eight centimeters by twelve and a half centimeters. And if you want millimeters, no, I'm not going to do millimeters. You can do that. It's close enough. 
This isn't precision. So I got two of them. They don't, oh yeah, they do have some uh, mounting posts, okay. But they don't come with screws to hold the box together. And those little turrets aren't threaded, but you can tap into them fairly easily just with a screw. I'm betting that'll take like an M6 or something like that. Or a number eight, if you do SAE. Okay, so that's good. It's always good to have a variety of different sizes of boxes in stock. You never know what project you're going to need a box for. Waterproof plastic cover project electronic case enclosure box. 125 by 80 by 32 millimeters. Waterproof. Mm, splash resistant maybe. Uh, I got these from Shinroy 66. These were what, $1.96 American, 254 Canadian. And I got two of them, and apparently I paid 49 cents shipping, or 63 cents shipping. Next in, we have Electronic. Does it say anything on this side? It says Module on this side. Eh. Could use more sharpening. Is this another project box? It's a kit with its own little project box. Well, that's pretty awesome. What is this? This is an EQ kit, branded kit. Let's zoom. Come on, camera. Work with me here. So, we have LED, a inductor, 47 microfarads. A, looks like a transistor labeled as a U, uh, so it could be something else. A resistor and an S1, which will be a switch. And then a bunch of pads that are labeled practice. So there's not that much to this little guy. Oh, and then a plus and a minus in. Okay, let's see what came with it. One honking big five millimeter, uh, no, that's not a five millimeter LED. What is that? That's, is that a 10 millimeter LED? No, eight millimeter, something like that. That's a big one. Okay, the inductor, three, four resistors in a couple of different values. A, is, is you a transistor? Y8115, a YX. Hmm, that might be a transistor. A little pushy button and a little pushy button knob. A couple of springs for batteries. Okay. So that mounts off there, I assume. And it'd be better if it was in, in frame, wouldn't it? And that mounts off there, I assume. How wide is that? Is that triple A space? I'd say it is. Would a double A fit in there? Maybe. I'm thinking triple A though. Just a little bit different size. Yeah, I think a triple A will fit in there probably better. Okay. So, but wait a minute, single battery, uh, sorry, cell, transistor inductor, is this a jewel thief? Because there's no way that you're going to be able to power an LED from a single battery. Where are we here? No, we're all the way up. And it's a bluish tinged white LED. Just one of the common ones, but it's huge. And that will not quite fit through there. Okay. Another simple little kit to add into the pile O kits. Nifty. Once again, this has been sitting around here for so long that I don't have the actual listing. Uh, this took 11 weeks to get here. However, 
This search will find it for you. New DIY FLE-1 kit, simple flashlight, 1.5 LED soldering circuit board, something like that. Um, I bought it for $1.28 from a robot home. They sell it right now, but they're selling it with, uh, with like almost 4 bucks shipping, which is just not performance. And there's the schematic of the thing. So you won whatever that is. Oh, wait it's it's a chip. Uh and that is the part number that's on mine, YX eighty one fifteen. I'll have to look that up in a second. Uh so that and a one and a half volt battery and a little inductor and a resistor. Not sure why there's multiple resistors. Oh, that's why. There's two 47 ohms and two for practice. Cool, free resistors. Through hole, I don't need much practice on. And springs and a shell and... Okay, so there it is. So the YX8115 is in fact an LED driver, not just a transistor. Interesting. It operates... Uh, from 0.9 to 1.5 volts. We'll start at voltage at 0.9, 80% efficient. There's the circuit. So this is sort of like a Jewel Thief, but doesn't use a generic transistor like the normal Jewel Thief does. Hmm, strange, interesting. Next in is storage bag. Really? That's something I would have ordered. Hmm, I'm becoming less and less impressed by that every cut that I make. So what are these? Oh, these are little, uh, yeah, okay. These are for, uh, for my railroading endeavors. What they actually are designed for is, uh, push rods in, uh, model aircraft and, uh, and some more vehicles. Where's a piece of stiff wire here? There we go. So this is the stiff steel music wire that I use for uh, for connecting between solenoids and my turnouts on the railroad. Um, so what you're supposed to do with this stuff, let me just zoom in a little bit so you can actually see what I'm doing is uh, so what you do is run the wire through a hole ah, come here and then just screw that down as a set screw and it clamps on or if it did if I would if it would if I was using a actual tool here and not just my wimpy fingers where is a screwdriver there we go okay that's still not grabbing on. This is obviously not big enough wire. Hmm. Okay, after flailing around, I found this piece of brass tube that should work. So you put your push rod through there. And you clamp down onto it with the set screw. Doink. And then this you bolt onto... Hang on. So then this little nut here you bolt onto a servo horn and then you can use that just as a push rod rather than getting something big like that and bending it down, especially if you're using steel rod or something or a piece of what music wire that's thicker than what I had. So that's, that could come in handy. I hope it will because I bought a bunch of them, but that, that should come in handy for, uh, for doing mechanical linkage like that. Uh, on the railroad if I'm doing I don't know maybe uh, crossing gates or something like that or some other sort of animation hmm I how much I paid for those guys 520-50-100 push rod connector adapter linkage for linkage stopper for servo arm pull rod there we go that's showing them in their normal habitat That's an even better picture of it. That's even the same kind of servos that I've got. Okay, uh, I got these from New Age Store, New Age underscore Store. I paid $2.03 for... No, I didn't. 
yeah, for 20 of them. If you want only five, it's 99 cents, but really, why wouldn't you do this? One last thing. DC buck step down power spike converter, etc. numbers, things. Okay. Fairly descriptive. And this is obviously a disposable knife. One of those. DC buck converter. Redeem yourself. Cut plastic. Wow. Wow, that dulled super fast. It did seem really sharp when I started. Okay, let's look at this buck converter. If it's what it claims to be. On the back here we have numbers. We have Outmax 3 amps in... 5 to 15 volts, 2 to 3 amps. We have an assortment of voltages that come off the side. It's labeled in the back too. 5 volts, 3, 3.3, 2.5, 1.8, 1.5. Default 1.25. Okay. So, what's going on in here? We have 4. 0.7 micro Henry inductor. We have an 8 pin chip that calls itself 1ACSE. Uh, feeding all these outputs, we have an array of resistors. Uh, is it? It's just creating a voltage divider to feed all those outputs. That's cheap. Oh, and that's not a single pad. Those are split pads with the voltage on the bottom on your screen and the ground common on the top. Okay, that's odd. A couple of capacitors down there. Strange little buck converter. So this is DC buck step down power converter board 5 to 16 volts to 1.25 or 1.5 or 1.8 or 2.5 or 3.3 or 5.3 volts. Uh, I got mine from somebody called Best for Cell who doesn't have this available anymore and I can't find the actual listing. But here is the same board currently on auction. I got mine for 84 cents. And that number just seems like an auction number to me. Um, but this is the same board. Um, so you can get them fairly cheap at auction if you try hard. And it it doesn't have a lot of information either. Just um, no potentiometer. Just need to short circuit the pad to the correct voltage. Oh, okay. I'll have to try that. Meanwhile. Let's go and grab a data sheet on this thing. Alright, so MP1495 chip, which is what it claims to be. Uh, wide operating input range, 4.5 to 16, yeah. Has internal power MOSFETs. Uses a 500 kilohertz switching frequency, so that's way above audio level and not going to cause you too much grief. And where is, so VN, some capacitors and things, an inductor, 4.7, which we saw. There, current limit, uh, 4.2 to 5 amps. That's surprising in such a little guy. Okay, so here's how it works. Uh, pin 8 is a feedback pin. Connect to the tap of an external resistor divider from the output to ground to set the output voltage. Okay, so that's what those shorting pads are. Just uh, a bunch of you know, resistor dividers f to set the voltage. Uh, VCC input. Uh, sense resistor. Bootstrap capacitor that goes there. Ground. Feedback. Error amplifier. Comparator. Okay. Nothing too surprising going on inside the box, though. Okay, and here's the math to figure out the uh, 
the voltage divider on the feedback pin. Oh look, that's pretty much exactly the voltages that are uh, that my mo module uses. Okay, that's as much as I need to know about that right now. All right, here's the high tech test setup. I've got 12 volts coming in here from my power supply. Which I'll turn on, and then at the output, um, let's let's just do this so I don't have a negative voltage showing. So that's with no uh, strapping on right now, it's showing 1.3-ish volts. Now then, if I short one of these pairs of pads, like that one up there. There we go, a shorter pair of pads. You know, 5 volts, or... 3.3. This would be easier if I was just shorting it permanently with a bulb of solder. 2.54 volts. 1. Point, come on. 1. 1.8. 1.5. And the default 1.3 with no resistors in. Okay. If that thing can actually crank out the amount of current it claims, it might come in handy somewhere. Not sure exactly where. And here we have today's mailbag items. The little buck converter. It could come in handy. These little pushrod clampy adapter things for, for servos. I am going to use those on the railroad, probably in a few different places. Some project boxes. Always handy to have kicking around. This little, actually, it's I got a buck converter and I got a boost converter essentially. It's a uh, that little essentially dual three kit flashlight thing. And then there's this weird little knife, the credit card knife. I wonder how often you can fold it back down into its credit card stealth mode. It's like the transformer of knives. And then flip it back up into its full-on knifey mode. Okay. That's... It doesn't hold its edge. It doesn't come with very much of a point on it. But I, it's not a daily use knife. It's just an emergency knife. And I could probably hone it back down to a little bit better edge just to have anyways. Which I'll probably do. I don't think it's going to be my permanent uh, mailbag knife because it's kind of goofy. I like my Wii Exacto. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Uh, comments and questions, as always, down below. Um, thanks, as always, on every mailbag to my Patreon supporters. The couple of bucks that those guys kick into the tip jar lets me keep buying this weird assortment of stuff for the mailbags and ultimately eventually for projects kits kit builds and other things thanks again for watching i will talk to you later